time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. Now, I've been experimenting around with a material called bronze fill for 3D printing. Now, this material is 80% bronze dust, the metal, and 20% PLA plastic that acts as the binder. What you end up when you print with it is a highly detailed thing that feels like metal or stone and it's very, very heavy. If you've watched my other videos where I 3D print my head, you'll, you'll see I actually have a scale in it and I weigh it and it weighs a ton. This stuff is awesome. But the coolest trait about this material is that it can be polished to a metallic shine, which is something that no other material can do. Now to put that to the test, I recently picked up one of these. It's a giant vibratory bowl. And yeah, I, I, God, they could have come up with a better name. That vibratory bolt sounds like it's used for like cleaning adult toys. But anyways, you probably most commonly see these for cleaning brass uh, shells from guns uh, before you do reloading and stuff like that. But they also can be used just for polishing. So I want to go ahead and try this out and see if it works. But because the material is a little spendy, I really don't want to risk destroying myself, of course. Mm, I love you, Mini Barnacles. And I really don't want to destroy my Groot because my Groot is freaking fantastic. So I need something else to try. Well, money has been tight lately, so why don't I go ahead and print up some Bitcoins? I hear they're worth a lot. <laughs> Mining Bitcoins is so yesterday. Warning, the Bitcoins you're about to see created in this video are not legal tender. Please do not report me to the IRS as I am not going to pay taxes on these coins because they are not real Bitcoins. All right, thank you and enjoy the video. All right, well, the start of any good 3D print begins with the slicer. So this is Cura 14.09 by Ultimaker. Now, this is actually a software created by Ultimaker, but it'll work with any G-code capable printer. All right, right now I have it set up for the Ultimaker 2, so I'm going to go ahead and drag our Bitcoin in here. And there we have it, one Bitcoin. All right, well, we want to print about six of these things at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click on this and multiply the object by five. And now we get a tray of six coins. They're all spaced out perfectly, so each coin can be printed entirely at once. That way you don't get problems from it transitioning back and forth on each layer. And you can actually change that by going under Tools and click Print All at Once or Print One at a Time. So Print One at a Time is preferred. All right, now I want these coins to be semi-detailed, so I'm going to go ahead and print at 0.1 layer height. And I'm also going to set the fill density to 100% because I want these completely solid. We'll go ahead and leave the print speed at 50. Now we don't need any support material, so we'll just go ahead and disable that. All right, now with the Ultimaker 2, the temperature is actually set at the printer in the material settings, but we will be using 260 C with a bed temperature of 60 C. All right, let's get these over to the printer. We got some 3D coins printed, so let's go ahead and get this uh, vibratory bowl out of the box and see if it works. All right, so this particular vibratory bowl, or I'm just going to call it vibrating polisher, that, even, that actually even sounds worse, but it's by Chicago Electric, and you can actually find a link in the video description if you guys would like to purchase this exact same one. We have a catheter hose, in case you need to pee yourself. Actually, I don't know what that's for. Instruction booklet. We all know what I do with instructions. There she is. God, this thing is gonna be loud. Eh, I'm starting to think I might've gone just a touch overkill. All right, so I went ahead and hooked up the shaker in my garage, cause I have a feeling it's gonna be really noisy. My wife's not gonna like that too much. So let's go ahead and open up the tub. You see down in there, it's just a big open space to put your media and it basically just oscillates it. So let's go ahead and uh, put some of the media in there and polish some coins. All right, so the media that I got to start polishing with right here is actually walnut shells, and it's actually the fine soft abrasive, and it says it's actually good for bronze. So I figured we'd give it a shot. Come on, walnut shells, in you go. 
I'm gonna fill it about three quarters of the way full. Uh oh, we have a problem. We missed it. We have a leak. Well, now I know where that hose goes. All right, folks, this is why you always read the directions. You gotta put you gotta put the tube on there so it doesn't pour your walnut shells everywhere. All right, let's put some more walnut shells in there. That's probably good. Warning, this stuff is really messy. Well, let's see what she sounds like. Well, I wasn't expecting that. It's actually really quiet. Let's see what the action looks like. Ooh, it's a vortex. Oh crap, it's swallowing the seal. Ah, give it back. It just creates like a little vortex that washes everything around. Now putting my fingers in there, it actually feels very soft. It almost feels like powder or flour. So uh, it'll be interesting. Like if you put it between your fingers, it's very gritty, but just the action of it floating around in there, it feels very airy and soft. So I'm curious to see if this will have any effect on that bronze. All right, so here I have six of the Bitcoins. I printed 12 in total, actually. I did two batches. And you can see around the edges, they're pretty clean, but there's a couple little burrs and stuff. I wanna see if the polisher takes those off. And otherwise, they look pretty good. I just wanna see if they come out shiny. So I'm gonna keep the other six flat so that we can do a comparison afterwards. All right, so the first coin in, it's gone. Second coin, gone. Third coin, fourth coin, fifth coin and six coin. All right, well, we've been running for about two hours. I just wanted to check and see if there's any progress being made. All right, let's go ahead and fish one of the, one of the tokens out. Here we go. Got one right here. You can see there is some slight change. Uh, the edge is a little bit smoother and the surface is a little bit smoother, but still there's no metallic shine to it. And the colors changed a little bit. You can see this one's a little bit lighter colored. So we're gonna go ahead and kick this into overdrive. I'm gonna go ahead and add five pounds of ceramic polishing abrasive to the walnut shells, and we're gonna see if that makes an improvement. This is an experiment. We're trying to see what the best way is to polish this bronze fill. All right, back into the pool with you. All right, so it's been a couple of hours now with the combination of the two things, and other than being a little bit lighter color and a little smoother to the touch, they are not polished. Now, I know I'm probably just being horribly impatient here, but I did some reading online, and somebody said adding a couple capfuls of this new finished stuff uh, really helps with polishing brass, so I figured out oh, why the hell not. Let's give it a try. All right, well, we wanted to work into the material first, so I left the Bitcoins out. Let's go ahead and just pour this in. All right, looks like we're dealing with a little bit of clumping. Now they said let the thing run for five minutes so that it gets really distributed. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, it looks like it's pretty well incorporated. Coins back in the pool. Well, unfortunately to my surprise, after 14 hours in the polisher, this is the only difference. This is the one that was in the polisher and this is one straight off of the printer. So if you look really closely here, you can see that it's a little bit scratched up. The surface is a little smoother. This one's a little bit rougher. Um, there's slight coloration changes uh, and there's like walnut jammed in every little orifice down here that I'll have to get out with like a pick. So walnut media obviously is not the media of choice, but you learn just as much from failure as you do from success, sometimes even more. All right, well, until I can find some new media for the vibratory bowl that works better with bronze fill, we're gonna have to try some alternative methods. All right, we have some sandpaper of varying grips. We've got some steel wool and we've got a Dremel with a brush disc on it. Let's see how these methods work. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna try is the Dremel rotary tool. I actually have a wire brush on it because a lot of people have told me the wire brushes work great for polishing this type of material. And I have it at a fairly high speed. Um, as I'm going around the coin, you can see I'm trying to move it really fast because I found out early on that if I hold it in one place too long, it builds up heat very, very quickly and it starts to actually melt and erode the material really easily. So you do have to move it around pretty briskly. And even with all the effort of moving it around constantly and working on it, I couldn't really get an even shine to it. As you can see here, it definitely did shine up. It's refracting light and it does look shiny like bronze, but it's just an inconsistent finish. So we're gonna go ahead and move on and try a different method. 
Okay, the method we're using now is actually steel wool, and this was actually one of the most recommended methods I could find online. And basically, I got some coarse steel wool and some fine steel wool. And you basically just rub it across the surface of the coin, just like I'm doing right here. I will caution you, though, make sure you wear thick gloves. Those little metal filings that come off that crap when you're using it literally get stuck in your finger like a thousand little uh, splinters. Yeah, not something you want to want to clean out. I kind of learned that hard hard mistake the first time. So make sure you're wearing gloves and also make sure you lay something down to catch all the little filings because there are a million of them. As you can see, this coin is shining brilliantly. Uh, you can you can totally tell between before and after that you definitely get that metallic shine and that bronze look the way it's refracting the light. This method works awesome. All right, now we're using the last method here, and that is starting off with sandpaper. Here I'm using 150 grit sandpaper, and I'm basically just laying it on a flat surface and rubbing the coin against it to try to you know, wear down the surface a little bit and level it out. As you can see here, it does shine a tiny bit, but not much. All right, so now we're down to the 400 grit sandpaper, and I'm going to do the same thing, just laying it flat and rubbing it on there. You can see the sandpaper actually is picking up some of the coloring from the metal and you can see it's actually getting a little bit of a luster to it. And I didn't try wet sanding, I'll try that in the future, but just dry sanding with 400 grit seemed to actually make a pretty good impact. Although still didn't look nearly as bright as it did with the steel wool as you'll see right here. See, notice it does refract light a little bit, but it's, it's pretty flat. All right, so now we're gonna take the steel wool to it here and uh, just finish it off. Cause I was curious to see if the steel wool would have a better impact if I started with the sandpaper to kind of get everything leveled off. And uh, to my surprise, this actually was the best method. Starting with sandpaper and actually moving to the steel wool gives you a brilliant shine as you can see here. I mean, it reflects like a mirror if you get it in the right light. All right, so I'm gonna take one more step and use Brasso Liquid Polish. Now, this stuff is good for polishing brass and bronze and all kinds of metals. So I went ahead and took the coin that we just used the sandpaper and steel wool on since it was the best result, and I wanted to see if I could improve on it. So you pretty much just apply the liquid wax. Make sure you soak it into a reg first. If you don't fully soak it in the reg, you get a little residue stuck in all the holes, which is what I'm dealing with right here. And then what you wanna do is take a dry cloth after a second and then just buff it. And as you buff it, you'll definitely see that it gets a lot shinier. And I also noticed it, it seems like it gets a little bit darker too. It almost, it, it, it almost gets like a little bit of a darker shade to it, but the light refracts off of it really beautifully. Now you can see right here in the light, I mean, it, it looks great. It looks like bronze. Uh, now, the one problem that you do run into is it's really hard to get in all the nooks and crannies with the sandpaper and the steel wool and all that. But if you worked at it for a long time, you could actually make it look amazing. Well guys, I successfully printed a whole bunch of Bitcoins and ColorFab bronze fill material. This material is amazing. It sounds like metal when you clink it together. It has the weight of metal and it even polishes like metal. It's unfortunate that the vibratory bowl that I used didn't work out well for polishing, but I wanted to experiment around and try media that I haven't seen other people use. And I haven't seen people use walnut media before, and I know that it's very, very popular for polishing brass casings from firearms. So it just didn't work well with this material. So I'm gonna move on to some other materials that I'm gonna try, including some porcelain. I'm gonna try some porcelain. I'm gonna try even just some metal screws and some other things that I've read online work really good in machines like that for polishing this media. But you know, sometimes you gotta experiment around and sometimes failure is the only way to learn. All right, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Also come over and follow me on Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also be sure to leave comments down below on the video and let me know what you think of it. The only way I get better is if you tell me what I'm doing right and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Be nice. All right, and last but not least, if you guys made it to the end of this video, go ahead and hashtag making bitcoins for the win. Also, make sure if you're gonna be doing the polishing stuff using the steel wool, I can't iterate enough, use the gloves. I literally was picking metal out of my hands for like a day, so yeah, wear, wear gloves. Also, probably should've wore gloves when I was dealing with that uh, bronze polish, because that stuff was smelled pretty caustic. So yeah, put, put some gloves on for that too. And if you guys end up printing your own bitcoins, which the model that I printed will be down in the video description, go ahead and send me pictures over on Twitter. I'd love to see your guys' prints. And if you get them polished up better than me, all the more better. I want to see it. All right, guys, until next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs> <laughs>